Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly vlog. So this week I'm going to be, it's the end of the month, so I don't know if I'll be starting any new books because I like to wrap my month up, but there are a few books that I do have on my list that I would like to finish by the end of this month. So here's hoping. So these are kind of the reading plans for the week. So currently I am 40% of the way through Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. Um, this is the third book in the Throne of Glass series. Um, or the fourth book, I guess, if you, however you choose to read it. There's two ways to read the series. You can either read Assassin's Blade fourth, which is how I'm reading it, which I think is called The Romantic Order, or you can read it at the beginning of the series before Throne of Glass, which I think is like the sequential order because all of the, everything in here takes place before Throne of Glass. Um, but yeah, so I'm reading in The Romantic Order. So Technically for me, this is the third book in the series. So again, 40% through this. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I'm really liking, it's, it's hard to talk about because it's the third book in the series, but I'm really liking where it's going and I'm enjoying um, just seeing Selena in this new environment and with these with these people and I'm thoroughly having a good time. Um, I was nervous to read it because I wasn't like obsessed with the first and second book, but people, a lot of people say that in the third book, like things just get better and I can definitely see that. So I am loving it. And I'm also hoping to finally finish up Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I really would like to finish this book by the end of the month. Um, I am on page 117, but I've been annotating it, which is why it's been taking me longer. And I've just been like taking my time with it. The last time I picked this book up was the challenge for um, the 24 hour like reading challenge that I did. So I have not picked it up since, but it's... And it's hard because I do genuinely like the book, but it's just not like fast paced enough. And I feel like there's just like not enough happening. Um, and it's a much different writing style than I'm used to. Like it's got the fourth uh, wall break um, in some spots and it's just not 100% what I'm used to. So it's definitely taking me some time, but I really love the writing and I love the descriptions and I am having a good time. So I would really, really like to finish this book by the end of this month. So after I finish these two books, maybe I will jump in and read some more of this. Um, I have quite a bit of time to read today, so maybe I will try to get a good chunk of this done today, but we'll see. But this is on my radar for this vlog. The last book that's on my radar for this reading vlog, I've been reading Haunting Adeline, which is a dark romance by H.D. Carlton. And I am, I think I'm 60% of the way through this book. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> this is my first dark romance and it's very interesting. So the concept of this book is that, um, Adeline is living in her grandmother's house and her grandmother passed away and Leo left the house to Adeline. Adeline's living there in the town that she grew up in. And when she, while she's there, she's being stalked by Zaid. And you get, it's dual POV, which I really love in a book. Um, and so you're getting Adeline's point of view and Zaid's point of view. And the way they have it is her POVs are called the manipulator and his POVs are called the stalker. And essentially he's kind of, he's stalking her. Um, but you learn like right at the beginning of the book that he actually, Zaid actually runs a ring or a, I forget, I don't know what it's called, like sting organization. Like he has this whole company and I think the company is just called the Z. And it's like, he's like a world renowned hacker. And so what he does is he goes in and he busts up like sex trafficking, child trafficking, all these like human trafficking rings and like saves the victims and you know brings the people to justice uh, you know that are you know doing these things um and so you learn that about him you know pretty early on and so in his pov you're kind of following him obviously stalking adeline but you're also following him as he's going through and busting up some trafficking rings and learning more about that. And honestly, that side of things, like reading about that is so interesting. Like, cause you know, this stuff happens, but you know, obviously it's not on everyone's daily radar. And honestly, it kind of should be because that stuff is terrifying. Um, so like just reading about it is kind of crazy <laughs> and a little bit scary, but um, I feel like it's something that 
you know, should still be talked about and thought about because stuff like that happens every single day. Um, and so it's just interesting to read about it in a, in a book because I haven't really read any books that had anything to do with like human trafficking, sex trafficking, child trafficking, like things like that. And so it's just interesting to like, to see, to read about that. Um, and then on Adeline's side of things, you know, she's an author and she works with her best friend, uh, Daya, I think is how you pronounce her name. And her best friend is uh, also a hacker. And so she, you know, sets up, you know, she just does all these things to help um, Adeline. And, you know, she's like Adeline's assistant as well and works with Adeline in a lot of, a lot of ways on her um, author side of things. So you have these two POVs and Zaid starts, you know, making himself more known in yeah, Adeline's life because she obviously realizes she has a stalker. And so you go through the motions, you go through the whole stalker thing and through her being an author and through him having this organization that he runs. And so the, that's kind of the main thing that I'm getting right now by reading their POVs. That's what we're, we have the stalking, the child, all the trafficking rings and her being an author and kind of dealing with things in her life. Um, and I don't know, it's just a very interesting book. I mean, it's a dark romance. So there's essentially the plot of this book is that she starts to fall for her stalker. And it's an interesting premise. Uh, like I said, it's the first one that I've read. There are some very intense scenes. Um, but honestly, I, I think I am enjoying the other plots a lot. Like the Adeline's whole life that we're learning about, like her grandmother, her great grandmother, like really enjoying that. And like, then there's the whole like mystery aspect of like, you know, Zade being a stalker and, and that, you know, Adeline has no idea who he is. And so it's just like that whole like mystery aspect as well. And so I'm enjoying it. The romance parts are a little bit intense. Um, and questionable but I am still enjoying it like I said I'm 62% through and it's a duology it's um, called the cat and mouse duology and um, so we'll see I don't know if I'm going to continue on with the second one but like I said I'm enjoying the first one and I'm here for the ride so those are the three books that I'm looking to wrap up by the end of the month so I will catch y'all later Hey guys, so I am very excited because um, my and my husband's two year wedding anniversary is today. And yesterday my present came in and he actually had me open it early. So I'm so excited because he got me the first seven volumes of Yona of the Dawn. And you guys, I am so stoked. Katie is reading, has been talking about these manga for a very long time and she is absolutely obsessed. I'm pretty sure it's like a fantasy romance manga and the covers on these alone are stunning. There's like 40 volumes um and so I literally just started the first one and I'm obsessed already but like just look at these covers like you can't even tell me that these are not the freaking most beautiful covers. Ugh. I'm just obsessed and I'm like I said I'm only um I'm in the first chapter of volume one and I've already cracked up like multiple times it's hilarious um so I don't really know the premise of any of these like I said I just kind of am going based off Katie's recommendation um but on the back it says princess Yona lives in an ideal life as the only princess of her kingdom doted on by her father the king and protected by her faithful guard hawk she cherishes it the time spent with the man she loves suwan but everything changes on her 16th birthday when tragedy strikes her family mm, kind of obsessed with that but like oh my god she had hair i'm obsessed i wish i could have hair color like that but anyways you guys so yeah that's kind of the only update really for now um, I was just super excited to get these and my husband is the best. So thank you, Victor. I love them very much. Um, yes. And reading updates. Don't really have any. Um, I am currently 80% through hunting, hunting, haunting Adeline. Um, still vibing with it. Still having a good time. It's an interesting read for sure. Um, and 
I don't know, there's not really too much to say about it without really giving it away. Um, and then I am 54% through Air of Fire, which I'm still actually loving Air of Fire. Um, we, it's like really hard to talk about because of spoilers, but we just met this creature that is talked about a lot, which I didn't really know anything about, but once you obviously get into it, you know about it. And I just met the said creature and I am obsessed. I love the banter between, um, Selena and this, this new character that has come into play and I love the new additional POVs that we're getting um in this book they are just phenomenal like I don't think there's one POV that like I'm bored of um even like I don't know call Kale's call Kale however you pronounce his name kind of bored of his POVs I'm not gonna lie but everyone else's POV I'm like obsessed with so yeah so that's the update for now i'm reading yona of the dawn tonight i'm gonna try to read the first volume i'm very excited about it and yeah so that's it you guys i just want to give you that quick update and i will chat with you guys later Hello everyone. So I wanted to film a quick update. So I am loving Yona of the Dawn. I'm on chapter four, Distant Skies, and this book is giving. There's been love, there's been betrayal, all in the first three chapters, you guys. So I can only wait to see what the rest of this manga has in store for me and the rest of the series. Again, 40 volumes. So I'm very excited. Um, so I'm going to be continuing this. I'm hoping to finish this up tonight. Um, I only have a little bit left. So definitely going to be finishing this. And then, so today is the 28th, which means the end of the month is nearing. And we all know what that means for me because I need to finish books. So I have two books that I need to finish by Friday night in order to wrap out the month and film my reading wrap up on Saturday. So um, the first one is going to be Haunting Adeline by um, H.D. Carlton and I'm on uh, page 434 and I'm still loving it's so weird like I feel like I'm liking the actual plot of the book more than the smutty rom like dark romance aspect of it like don't get me wrong those scenes are because I love a good tension filled moment but I just feel like the whole plot itself is just so interesting that that's kind of like to me just like what I've been enjoying more um I still don't know if I'm gonna read the second one I've heard that this one ends on a pretty big cliffhanger I already have a prediction as to what it's gonna be but we'll see so I'm 80% through this I have just about under 100 pages left so I am really hoping that I can um finish Yona and maybe finish this but I am absolutely loving it like I said I listened to it um when I was driving around after work to go get groceries and all that and I'm on page 329 so this one I have quite a bit of ways to go because I think there's like 562 pages and I'm at 329 so I have over 200 pages left but I'm loving this book so much like it is so good like I like it so much better than the first two um but it's just I love the POVs in this book so much more like I love the characters that we've been introduced to and the creatures we've been introduced to and just where the plot is going I am obsessed so I don't know which I want to read tonight I think I'm just going to try to finish Yona try to finish um Haunting Adeline that way 
tomorrow I have a hair appointment so I'm hoping I get some reading done but I haven't seen my hairdresser in a minute because she actually just had her first baby um and he is adorable so me and her are probably gonna have a lot to catch up on um but I'm hoping that I'll have time to finish um you know reading one of the books because I only have today tomorrow and Friday so my goal is to like I said finish Yona today and then likely finish Haunting Adeline. That way I can focus on Air of Fire Thursday and Friday. So we shall see. <laughs> Hey guys, so I wanted to just film a quick update. I'm currently outside my hair salon. I am about 15 minutes early. Figured I would film a quick update. So I did finish Yona of the Dawn last night. I really, really like that. I gave it a four stars. It was honestly just so cute and so wholesome. And I am like just loving where the story is going so far. And I love our main character. Yona is amazing. And I'm very excited to just kind of see where this series progresses. Cause like I said, there's 40 volumes. So we have a long way to go. There's also an anime. Um, so I have to figure out what volumes of the manga that anime follows. That way I can like read those and then watch it because I definitely want to watch it. Um, and then I also did finish Haunting Adeline. So I gave it a three star and that's not a bad thing. I really, really liked the book. I genuinely just ended up skimming and skipping through a lot of the sex scenes like at the end like the latter half of the book um just because I felt I mean I know that's what the point of this book is so I'm I'm not saying it's a bad book because of that because that's literally why people love the book so much is because of those scenes which is totally fine like uh I love smut scenes as much as the next person but um I just felt like they were happening like a lot it for for me so that was kind of why I knocked it down a star um but I love Zade even though he is clearly morally gray um and I do love Addie I think she is honestly badass and I love the way that like she comforts Zade and like how their relationship like grows when it's not just the sexual feelings between them like I liked seeing their emotional connections grow and so that was one of the main reasons I really loved it was because obviously things started out in a uh, rocky manner um but I do think that things progress and I just want to put this out there that I in no way shape or form condone how their relationship started this is a fictional book and it's in a fictional world and obviously in real life that would never be okay um and so I just wanted to kind of put that disclaimer out there because I know that this book is it kind of is pretty intense um so I did just want to say that um but one thing I also which I've talked about before in this vlog is that I really really loved the actual plot of the book besides the romance so you're following Zade who is he owns Z which is his company that um follows tracks down and saves you know uh kids women people and in, involved in like human and sex trafficking and i really enjoyed learning about even learning about but just seeing the plot line progress from like him and his hacker days to what you know everything that happens throughout and um and at the end so i definitely think it's very interesting to just um 
to read about that because it's a plot that's not typically talked about and it was honestly very unexpected like I know that this was a dark book but I just didn't know exactly what the rest of the plot was about because I don't read the blurbs so I really didn't know much about it but I thoroughly enjoyed it um like that aspect just reading about it like it was just interesting it kept me on my toes there was like the added murder mystery um for Addie's grandmother and like that was really interesting so there were like these little aspects that I really really loved um I just think like I said the sex scenes just got to be like too much for me um there was a lot and they were like long they were like chapter like a chapter long and I'm like okay you could only tell me you're putting it in so many holes so many times <laughs> where I want to keep reading it like again I've read books that have smut scenes in it okay and I love them don't get me wrong but this was just too much for me um but it was fine I was skimming over them like not really and, I, and honestly a good thing is that I didn't feel like I was losing anything by skipping those scenes like I feel like if you skip those scenes and you feel like you're losing out on character development and like relationship development that the romance in the book honestly is just not good but because I didn't feel like when I was skipping those scenes, I was losing out on anything. Like I honestly could have done completely without those scenes and I still would have loved the characters just as much. Um, and now the book does end on a cliffhanger. I haven't decided if I'm going to read the next book yet. I might pick it up, just not right now. Um, Cause I'm also currently reading Air of Fire. I'm on chapter 40 of Air of Fire. I am loving Air of Fire so much, you guys. Oh my God. I when people tell you to push through those first couple books they are not lying not that throne of glass and crown of midnight were bad throne of glass honestly wasn't my favorite i think i gave it like three stars crown of midnight i gave four i did enjoy it but air of fire was looking to be like a four and a half 4.75 like i am obsessed with the povs i'm obsessed with the new characters we've been introduced to i'm loving it so yeah so that's the update for now i am going to go to the hairdresser my bestie andrea she does a phenomenal job with my hair um i have been like trying to go blonde literally my entire life and uh, i went to a hairdresser before her and when i was going blonde i literally hated how it looked and so i just dyed my hair like every other color under the sun um i used to have like red hair i've had blue hair i've had purple hair i've had like a bajillion colors um but uh when i started working at my old job i met my best friend amanda and when she got married she had andrea do her hair and makeup for the wedding and she looked absolutely stunning on her wedding day and so then i when i got proposed to i was like mm, okay she's also doing my hair and makeup so then i started going to her because i realized i wanted to be blonde for my wedding and so then she took me i'll insert pictures because she's amazing if you guys are in connecticut i definitely recommend her she's phenomenal um but she took me from all these different you know these brown red brassy to like horrible and like i'll pop in later after i'm done and i'll show you guys what my hair looks like and like and i'll show pictures from like my wedding and all that she did such an amazing job i absolutely love her and shout out to amanda for getting me to her because i've been going to andrea now for i think two and a half years almost three years which is kind of crazy i feel like that's the longest i've ever gone to a single hairdresser because i feel like none of them have known what they're doing and she knows what she's doing so absolutely love her um so again her name is andrea but she works at tara's beauty studio in rocky hill um and she's absolutely amazing she, yeah so that's the update for now i'll pop in later and i'll touch base with you guys mm -hmm. Hey guys, so I want to come a quick update. Me helping my mom move. I'm not gonna be doing much because I have like four herniated discs. So I'm just the button pusher on the truck. But um, it's like an hour drive to where she's moving, and then it'll be like an hour drive back to my house. So and my husband is driving, so I'll have like two hours to read. I will be editing my um, June reading wrap up on that drive as well but I will primarily be reading probably Air of Fire. I'm gonna bring my Kindle with me so I can hopefully get some reading done. Um, so that is the game plan. Also, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on my hair. So this is the hair. 
blonder, a little bit shorter, just a little trim. And I love her so much. She worked her magic per usual. Um, so yeah, that's the update for now. I'll keep y'all posted and we'll check in later. Hey guys, so I just got back from my um, mom's and moving her from her house to the other house. So guess what showed up on my door? my fairy loot box and i am pretty sure that this is my stolen air um edition by holly black which i'm stoked about i do have the regular like barnes and noble exclusive but when i saw this i just had to get it oh my god you guys it is beautiful and i could already tell oh all right let's unwrap this oh my god it is so pretty Stop it. This is freaking stunning. And it has the gold edges. Stop. And it has a quote on the back. A runaway queen, a reluctant prince, and a quest that may destroy them both. Oh my god, that is oh this is so beautiful. So for those who don't know, this the stolen air is the um, start of another series that Holly Black is writing, but it is about, this is Oak from The Cruel Prince, which is Jude's younger brother, and this is Ren, which if you guys read The Cruel Prince, you'll know who she is as well. She is a part of that trilogy towards the end. Um, so I'm so excited. I've been waiting to read this. Oh, wow. I just can't get over these edges. So let's open it up because I don't know if it has, oh, stop it this is i'm gonna take the dust jacket off oh stop that is absolutely stunning i'm obsessed and there's like on the back too so this is the end paper art so pretty oh wow oh my god it's like a little she wrote a little note in here and she signed it oh my god that is amazing <clears throat> that is so cool wow and her maps are so cool i love the way that she does her maps oh, i'm so excited to read this all right, let's check out the back. Oh, it's the same one. It's a stunning edition, but absolutely obsessed. So I love ordering from Fairy Loot. Their stuff is such good quality. I'm just, I cannot get over these gold edges. This will definitely be going on display. And I just love the dust jacket too. So, and I have also ordered the Lit Joy versions of the Cruel Prince trilogy. Um, so I'm very excited to get those. I don't know when those are going to come in, but I believe those also have the gold edges. So all of the books will kind of match, I think, which is so exciting. But yeah, this book is just stunning. Anyways, I'm obsessed. I love ordering fairy loot books. They are just so pretty. I mean, when I can get my hands on them anyways, because, um, they are so hard to get. I think that the only other special edition books that I'm currently waiting for, I have like pre-ordered books. Like I pre-ordered Iron Flame from Waterstones. Um, and then I'm waiting on The Cruel Prince from Lit Joy. But I think that's it. I don't think I have any. I have a bunch of like reminders set in my phone to order other Fairy Lou um, exclusives. So like I have one for um, Things We Never Got Over um and i have a few i don't remember i can't remember for the life of me what the other ones are but i always put reminders in my phones to go and order them because i just think all like the fairy loot books are so stunning and like i never know if i'm gonna get into a series or not so i think that like fill you know buying ones even if like i don't know if i'm gonna like it or i mean like i said this is the first i mean i already know i love the cruel prince it's literally a five star series for me but I don't know if I'm going to like The Stolen Air. People love The Stolen Air. But I haven't read it. And this is technically the first book in her new series. I don't know if it's like a duology or a trilogy or what. Um, how many books there are going to be. But 
Yeah, I mean, I just, I can't stop looking at this cover. It's just so pretty. Ugh, I'm obsessed. This makes me so excited to read this, honestly. Like, I have the Barnes & Noble. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, and I actually bought this on drop day. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a beautiful one. But, you know, it's just, I, I wish Barnes & Noble did better exclusives. Like, I feel like all they do is they just do, like, a different cover. And it's not even, like, a cool cover. Like, um, this is kind of cool. Which, I don't know if this is part of the exclusive or not. But the naked cover for the Barnes & Noble has the fox on it. And I do love this. I love the naked cover for this. I think it's stunning. And I love the blue. Um, so this is really, really nice. And I would honestly probably display, so um, I would probably just keep, I would keep this, but if I were to display these two books together, like I would honestly probably display them like this with the naked um, cover for this one and then the, cause I just love this cover. So I would probably just display them like that. And then when I get my um, Lit Joy for Cruel Prince, I'm gonna probably do like a little shelf, like a Cruel Prince shelf because I own, you know, the three original Cruel Prince books, and then I'll have the exclusives, and then I will also have these two books. So I'm very excited, and I hope when the next book of this one comes out, they'll do it, um, they'll do like a matching one, which I think they usually do, so I'm not like too worried about that, but yes, I'm very excited. And when I read it, I don't even know if I would honestly read the exclusive version. I might just read the um the Barnes and Noble one just because I don't know but I do love this fox anyways it's just turned into like a st whole stolen air clip um because I think when I bought this I didn't I wasn't really into like buying like fairy loot or anything like that like I just was kind of buying whatever like I didn't care if it was exclusives I didn't care if it was signed like anything like that but the longer that I've been doing this, the more I just, I want like these really cool, like the water, this is the Waterstones exclusive for Life of Puppets. This is Fairy Lou. This is, um, this is just a Dracula version that I found at Barnes and Noble. This is obviously just the fourth wing. This was a Barnes and Noble exclusive. This was as well. Um, but I just love having like the cool edges, the cool, um, like the dust jackets and um like the exclusives like it's just amazing so yeah so that's that i think that's the whole clip i don't really have anything else to update you guys on so um we did we went moved my mom and then we i while i was doing that i was on sprints because with katie's patreon she was doing sprints and i wasn't really reading but during their chatty sessions like i was like on my phone we were driving so my husband was driving and i think i convinced katie to read zodiac academy because i love zodiac we, we all know i love zodiac academy and like i like low-key convinced myself to read book six so um, i think i also convinced some of the other girls in the chat <laughs> to pick up za but honestly i'm not mad about it pick it up it's it's like literally the trashy fantasy romance we all need in our lives so yeah so anyways i'm gonna put these two on a shelf together and i'm very excited because this book is so pretty let me not touch my face to it because i was like wearing makeup this morning who knows if i am now i like probably sweat it all off but um but yeah just beautiful so i read a couple of chapters of air of fire still loving it rowan it's really hard to talk about because i don't know there's a lot of spoilers like because i'm in the third book in the series i'm just loving the characters so much in this book the characters the povs like i'm obsessed the only pov that i don't like is Cal. i think he's annoying so we'll throw that out there but i'm loving every other pov honestly so yeah so that's the update for now and i'm gonna be reading it a little bit i don't know if i'm gonna pick up happy place or if i'm gonna pick up air of fire but one of them and i will touch base with y'all later good morning people so literally the only purpose of this clip is to say that i love coffee and i'm so grateful for it honestly mm. love it anyways 
today is Sunday and it is rainy, which honestly is kind of perfect Sunday reading weather. So, um, I'm just hunkering down and reading for the day. So my goal is to try to read as much of Air of Fire today as possible. I think I have less than 200 pages left. So my goal is to try to just finish as much of that today as possible. Um, if I can finish the book, that would be lovely, but it's all right. Um, for now, I'm gonna go back inside my home, drink my coffee and watch some sprints, do some reading, hang out with my cats. So catch you guys later. Hey guys, so I just wanted to quickly wrap up this vlog. So I actually just finished Air of Fire and I gave this 4.5 stars. I absolutely loved this book. I loved all the different POVs we got. I can't really talk too much about it because it's the third book in the Throne of Glass series. And obviously I don't want to spoil anything, but when I tell you the characters we get introduced to in this book, the plot lines that we get introduced to in this book, game changer. I wasn't the biggest fan. I really didn't like the first Throne of Glass book, Throne of Glass. Um, I think I only gave it three stars and then Crown of Midnight was okay. Like it got better, but game changer. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. And I like cannot wait to continue this series. So I'm very excited and obsessed with this book. When people say it all changes with Air of Fire, believe them. If you've read the first two books um, and even because there's two different ways you can read it. You can read The Assassin's Blade before Throne of Glass or you can read it after Air of Fire, which is how I'm reading it. So even if you get through The Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, pick up Air of Fire if those first three books, even if they didn't do it for you, pick up Air of Fire. So yes, 4.5 stars. I just finished this. And then I also read Haunting Adeline in this vlog. Again, I gave that book a three stars. I've talked about that extensively. And then I also read the first volume of Yona of the Dawn, which I gave four stars. Loved it. It's a really good time. And yeah, so that is the end of the vlog. I hope you guys all enjoyed and I will probably see you guys next week for another reading vlog. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.